Well, as Megan introduced me, I am Stephanie. I'm a junior at Kaiser High School. And today I will be giving you a talk entitled, Bigger Isn't Necessarily Better. Now, bigger is better. This is a phrase that we commonly hear in our society today. Not only is it encouraged by American consumerism, but also by industrialization and urbanization, which we are seeing throughout the world. There are times when, yes, I do believe that bigger can be better. Take, for example, bigger buildings and other forms of infrastructure. However, there are also times when bigger can get a little ridiculous, like bigger jewelry or bigger burgers. It's at times like these that I ask myself, is bigger really better? Could, in fact, smaller be better? For instance, smaller cell phones, smaller computers, or even technologies relating to medicine, such as smaller blood sugar level detectors. All of these items have made a difference in our society, have benefited us in some way, not because they are bigger, but in fact because they are smaller than their predecessors. Recently, I was listening to another TED Talk by a young scientist named Henry Lin. Henry was a grand prize finalist at last year's Intel International Science and Engineering Fair for his research on galaxy clusters. Now, these galaxy clusters, as the name implies, are groupings of many, many different galaxies. And they can be millions and millions of light years across. In essence, we can think of these as the biggest building blocks of our universe. Now, as Henry was giving his talk, he spoke passionately about how important these galaxy clusters are and how much we can learn from them, mainly because of their massive size. Now, as a fellow astronomer, I too am passionate about my research. And I thought to myself, how is my area of study just as important as these clusters? My area of study is specifically asteroids. And if we consider galaxy clusters to be the largest building blocks of our universe, then asteroids can be considered to be the smallest building blocks. In fact, the largest asteroid is only 1,000 kilometers in diameter, which may seem large to us, but is minuscule in comparison to these clusters. Now, there are four main reasons why I feel that these seemingly small and unimportant objects are, in fact, significant. The first being quantity. Now, if you think of any area of science, any scientist will tell you that the more data you have, the more trials you run, the more experiments you have, the more reliable your conclusions will be. Let's imagine each, each individual asteroid to be its own data point on a graph. In this simulation behind me, you can see the year in the bottom left right here, along with the number of asteroids known up to that point. In the center, you see a yellow dot, which represents the sun, and four blue dots orbiting about it, which represent the four inner planets of Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. All of the other little dots that you see along the image represent asteroids. As they're being discovered, you can see them lighting up, like right over here. Those are all asteroids that are being discovered. Currently, there are over 500,000 asteroids known to us and if you ask me, that's a lot of data for scientists to be working with. The second point is composition. Each individual asteroid has its own unique composition, whether it be an S-type, which are stony, silicaceous objects, or a C-type, which are dark, carbonaceous objects. As these asteroids are thought to be leftovers from the formation of our solar system, by analyzing what they are made of, we can in turn gain a better understanding of our own Earth, our solar system, and its early formation processes. The third point is proximity. While many of those Earth-shaking, globe-changing events that we consider to be big are happening in faraway countries, excuse me, are happening far away from us, there are also big things that are happening even further away, such as these types of missions here. 
this is an image of NASA's OSIRIS-REx mission, which is planning to land on the surface of an asteroid in the year 2018 to collect and retrieve samples. Now, while this may seem really far-fetched for us, imagine trying to reach a galaxy cluster, which lies millions and millions of light years away. These asteroids are, in fact, much closer to us on Earth than we tend to think. The fourth point is impact potential. Now, most of you, when you hear asteroid impact, will think of one thing, dinosaurs. And yes, granted, asteroid impact is one of the leading theories as to how the dinosaurs became extinct 65 million years ago. Asteroids can, in fact, also bring about life, not only destroy it. One of the leading theories as to how life got to Earth is that it came through these asteroid impacts. Extensive research has shown that the materials on the surface of these asteroids, when impacted at high speeds, come together to form amino acids. Now, these amino acids are the basis for all life on Earth. Essentially, there are building blocks for life on Earth. And in this way, asteroids can be both destructive and bring about life. Now, many of you may be thinking, how do these four points apply to anything other than these giant space rocks? I mean, are these the only little things that are important? And my answer to that is no. These four points can apply to any of the little things that we see in our day-to-day -day lives. Take, for instance, quantity, which was the first point. Whether it be something as simple as holding the door open or saying thank you, small actions and gestures occur in numerous amounts every single day if we care to notice them. The second point is composition. By analyzing the little things that people say or do, we can gain a better understanding of them as an individual and what their character is like or what they're made of, their composition. Third point, proximity. Like I said before, many of those large global scale events that are happening are actually quite far away from us as individuals. We don't know the leaders of the events, nor do we know the people who are involved in them most of the time. However, small events, events that occur within our families, within our friends, or our communities, these are the events that are close to us, the events that we have the power to make an impact on. Which leads me to my fourth point, impact potential. Now, just like asteroids, each of us has the potential to be make both a positive or a negative impact. And it's us, up to us to make a conscious decision every day to recognize that our actions have this kind of power. I would like to conclude with a quote by late American author Frank A. Clark, which says, everyone is trying to accomplish something big, not realizing that life is made up of the little things. So I invite you, my audience, today to remember that no matter how small or insignificant you may feel you are or you may feel your actions are, they are in fact big and can make a truly big difference. Thank you very much.